Miss Hicks, I told you I wasn't to be disturbed. I know, but Mr. Duncan insists on seeing you. Well, tell him to wait a minute. I didn't know Duncan was back in the South. Well, as I was saying, Bob, the lower courts may... Why, Alan, Mr. Parsons, I quit. Oh, now, Alan, you must... I be... quit. Mr. Parsons, I've been with this firm for a good many years. I've never shirked an assignment yet. But these Pembertons are too much for me. Pembertons? Oh, now, sit down, Alan, sit down. <sighs> Yes, the Pembertons are the people who own the property the Westchester Hunt Club is trying to buy. Oh, yes. The club offered quite substantial prices, I remember. Seemed a very simple matter. A very simple... There are eight heirs to the property. All I had to do was to get their signatures to the deed. Sounds very simple, doesn't it? I quit. Oh, sit down, Alan. No, sit down. You're overwrought. You take a rest. I'm going to take a rest, Mr. Parsons. I'm going to a sanitarium for six months, for a year. Somewhere, anywhere, I'll never again hear the name of Pemberton. They're mad, I tell you. They're mad. Now, Alan, Mr. Pemberton's a famous scientist. Maybe a bit eccentric, but... A bit eccentric! Mr. Hilton, listen to me, please. Three months ago, I was a well man. Happy, laughing, carefree. My appetite was good. Then I was assigned to clear the title to the Pemberton property. Mr. Hilton, I ask you, what was the obvious thing to do first? Correspond with them. Just so. I corresponded with them. If you can call it corresponding, to write over a hundred different letters without receiving one word in reply. I wrote mild, imploring letters. I wrote stern, peremptory letters. No answer. They never answered? Not one word. What would you have done next, Mr. Hilton? Get in touch with them personally. Precisely. I did just that. But it's not as simple as it sounds. They're a much-traveled family. I chased down two old maid aunts in Connecticut. I pursued Mr. Herbert Pemberton to Boston. The old maids wouldn't answer the door. Herbert threw a paint pot at me. It seems I disturbed his mood while he was painting. They do seem a strange lot, but calm down, Alan, you're quivering. I heard most of the family had gone to Aiken. I followed them. Oh, what people. Mr. Parsons, I feel like a fool. I've been on this assignment for six months, and as yet I haven't even broached the subject to any one of them. I think it better all around if I just resign and go away. Oh, calm yourself, Alan. Now you take a rest. We'll give this assignment to someone else. We'll put someone else on the trail of the Pembertons. Poor fellow. I feel for him. Let's send Henry McMorrow. <laughs> oh, I know it sounds silly, J.P., but think it over a minute. Henry, he's so lackadaisical. These people will wake him up. Come to think of it, he might be just a man. Yes, Mr. Parsons. Miss Hicks, get Mr. McMorrow for me. Yes, sir. Alan, you go home and get a rest. Poor McMorrow. I feel sorry for him. <laughs> Wait until he meets Junior. Junior? Yes, the youngest Pemberton child. Ten years old, in years, but a prodigy. A prodigy? Yes, he's already graduated from high school, with the highest scholastic averages ever made by a high school student. At ten years of age? Yes, he's ready to enter Harvard at ten, mind you, and reads, writes, and speaks twelve languages, including the ancient Egyptian. You just go on home, Alan, and take a nice long rest. Thank you, I will. Mr. McMorrow has left for the day. His secretary says he will be in Central Park feeding the pigeons until 5 o'clock. After that, he usually goes to the aquarium. Well, have Jones get hold of him and explain the Pemberton matter thoroughly. And get reservations on the night train for Aiken. And have McMorrow at the depot on time. I'll meet him there with the papers and give him his last-minute instructions. Yes, sir. The aquarium, feeding pigeons. If those Pembertons are really crazy, Henry will feel right at home. Mason Dixon, pilot, rack 11. Less than two minutes. Where can he be? Jones will find him, Mr. Parsons. Jones always finds him. He knows his habits. His habits. The habit of having no sense of responsibility. The habit of always being late. He's a fine young fellow. He's been spoiled by too much money, too many advantages. He needs some incentive. Incentive? Here he comes. I knew Jones would find him. Hello, Mr. Parsons. I'm all out of breath. That's a being a brittle. No, no, Henry. Now, your pullman is up ahead and I've sent your baggage on. Now, the documents are all here. I hope you realize how important this is to us. Sure, but I don't think it's so difficult. I go to Aiken, South Carolina, have the Pemberton family sign the papers, and then bring them back here. But it may not be so simple. We've written Pemberton time and time again. We've had no reply to our letters. Well, you know how those famous signs are. Our client, the Westchester Hunt Club, is very anxious to clear the title of this property. And I expect you to get results. The papers are as good as signed. Well, now, here are your tickets, Henry. The best I could do on such short notice is a lower. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. I'll do my best. Now, one more thing, Henry. In the three years you've been with us since your father died, I can't say that you set the world on fire. Well, I'm willing to admit that, but it isn't entirely my fault. Look at the unimportant cases I've been given. Well, you've got your chance now. <laughs> if I don't come through, you can kick me out of the firm. I'll spend the rest of my days in Central Park feeding the pigeons. I'll remember that. <laughs> Wait a minute. The reason I'm sending you on this particular train is that Miss Antoinette Pemberton, the daughter of the man we're trying to do business with, is aboard. She's on the way to join her family at Aiken. Get acquainted with her if you can. It's as good as done, Mr. Parsons. Goodbye. You got nothing to worry about. Goodbye, Jones. Goodbye, Gil. No, boys, I think he'll put this over all right. I have a hunch he'll come back with the papers all signed. The papers. He's forgotten them. The briefcase. 
<laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. as soon as the dining car opens? Yes. And listen, if you see any stray animals, I don't want any. Animal? Yes, I don't want any. No. Yes, sir. Orange juice and black coffee and eggs, Benedict. Thank you. Morning. Oh, you again? Good morning, young man. <clears throat> you taking this trip all alone? They do things so much better on the continent. There, a waiter would never dream of asking impertinent questions. Pineapple juice, shredded wheat, pancakes, buttered toast, marmalade, and coffee. Say, you remember the Sig Beta Phi? Yeah. It's one of the most interesting of the Greek letter fraternities. Founded in 1778 by, wait a minute, Jupiter Claypool Adams. Say, you know a lot about Sig Beta. When you grow up and go to high school, are you going to join? I have graduated from high school. Ooh. Oh, say. Uh oh. Waiter, serve me over there. Here you are, sir. Eggs Benedict. Ah, Eggs Benedict. Will you go away? There's an interesting story about that dish. All right, all right. They say that Napoleon the second chef, Benedict Chaminard, while slightly on the influence of grog, poured the hollandaise sauce on the eggs instead of the asparagus. Yes, yes. Napoleon enjoyed the dish and named it Eggs Benedict. <laughs> you don't say. Putting half an olive on top of each egg wasn't done until much later. Yes, that's very funny. <laughs> Remarkable how much they resemble a dead man's eyes. Yes. <laughs> huh? Oh. I don't think I'm hungry. Waiter! Cancel my order! Case. It's imitation leather. Why, why you little brat? I ought to wring your neck. No, no, no violence. Those are valuable papers. You're a prodigy, eh? Help! Well, I'm going to make you smart on both ends. Help! Murder! Police! Oh! What are you... Oh. Help! Murder! Police! Take your Help. hands off that child. Let go of him, you big bully. But my briefcase... You should be very proud of yourself going about beating poor little children. Now, let me explain. Don't change the subject. Now, listen, lady. You ought to be ashamed. I'm taking some very important papers to Aiken, South Carolina. There's no excuse. If you lay another hand on him, I'll have him throw you off at the next stop. Come on, Junior. Look. Oh. Oh, you... you little... Well, your sister's quick thinking saved your life that time. Why are we fooling with a man's papers? It's on account of Professor Jordan's theory. What? Professor Jordan's theory about people with wavy brown hair. What are you talking about? You see, Professor Jordan has promulgated a theory that people with wavy brown hair are extremely apt to become violent when subjected to constant irritation. And the gentleman has wavy brown hair, hasn't he? Oh, yes, a fine specimen. I was bored by the trip until I saw him. Now, let me see. How can I annoy him until we arrive at Aiken? Oh, Porter. Did you find out the number of Miss Pemberton's reservation? Miss Pemberton? Yes, sir. She's in drawing room A. That's the young lady just give you the business, sir. <laughs> what? 
Go to two I saw it first. Look. Oh, Junior. Oh, Junior, all over you. Oh. I'll be going right back to the station. Okay. Welcome to Pemberton Manor, sir. The family is expecting you. They knew I was coming? They're most anxious to meet you, sir, naturally. You took a cab, sir. We sent a car to the airport for you. But I came by train. Oh, it'll not be necessary to announce you. You can freshen up a bit in there and join the family in the drawing room. Thanks. This window will be regarded by future generations as my masterpiece. I can see it years from now. Set up in the loo, like a shrine. I'm no longer a surrealist. I'm a post-surrealist. What are you doing now, Herbert? I call it the love life of a cup and saucer. My goodness. Are they that way, too? Mm. Now, here, here is a rare item. Found only in the collection of the Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. This is a Moldavia, 1858. This stamp really has a very interesting history. I'm sure it has, Alan. But what good are cancel stamps? You can't mail letters with them. Uh... Oh! Here he is at last. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Tony's mother. I'm Henry McMorrow. And uh, this is her brother, Herbert, and her uncle, Alan. Alan is my brother, and Herbert right. being Tony's brother makes, uh, makes Herbert my son. <laughs> oh, I'm Alice Pemberton. What did you say your name was? Henry McMorrow. Oh, stop joshing me. I know it's Howard. Uh, no, it's Henry. Oh, but I distinctly know better. I remember very well reading Tony's letter. She said I had become engaged to a man named Howard Rogers. So, you see, your name can't be Henry. Say, are you interested in philately? Uh, no, I'm Henry McMorrow, Parsons Hilton Trent McMorrow. Mrs. Pemberton. Yes? Cook's drunk again. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's twice this week, not including a day off. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Say, would you mind... You better look on the last year's fellow. I wonder what's the matter with him. Well, there's always something the matter with Tony's fiancés. Perhaps he hasn't any money. Have you any money? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, well, it must be something else. Perhaps he's a little bit feeble-minded. Perhaps. Say, uh... I would like to ask... I've sent your luggage to the green room, sir. This way, please. Uh oh, just I a minute. I'm afraid you'll find it a little uh, crowded. I'd like to know. explain. There are a couple of old easels, some uh, paints and brushes. But see, I'm not... Uh, I don't listen, I must explain. Never do Wait it. a minute. Now, well, there's been a big mistake. Where is Mr. Pemberton? There is Mr. Pemberton. But... Mr. Pemberton, I'm Henry McCall. Please, Parsons, I'm sir. very busy. Uh, but Mr. Pemberton, please... Mr. Pemberton. Please come back some other time. Please come listen. back next week, next month. I have a I'm very busy. My daughter's bringing my son here for the holidays. Welcome home. Hello. He's in the study. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Yes, thank you, Wilbur. Will you see that the bags are taken care of? Hello, Papa. Welcome home, Junior. What's this? You're surprised. Papa bought it for your homecoming. Just what you wrote me you wanted. A toy. I meant a real one. A real bear? I don't think we could do that, Junior. You remember your African ostrich and all the trouble we had with the neighbors. I'm afraid you'll have to be satisfied with this one. A teddy bear. It's too adolescent. Papa, he kicked me. Uh, oh, that's silly, prodigy. Junior. How could he? I've been here all the time. Not here. In the depot. He kicked me in a public place. Now, just a minute. Please let me explain, Hold Mr. Pemberton. I'll go get help. Is this true, young man? Did you kick my son? Please, Mr. Pemberton, let me explain. What is the meaning of this? Who are you, anyway? This I... is Miss Tony's fiancé, sir. Miss Tony's fiancé. No, there's a misunderstanding. If you just let me talk to you for a minute. Hello, Papa. Now, Tony, this is really going too far. 
You've got to be more careful about what sort of fiancés you bring around here. This fellow claims he just kicked Junior. Oh, I didn't say that. Kicked Junior? If you weren't Tony's fiancé, I'd rend you limb from limb. He's not my fiancé. He's a brute who struck Junior. Who struck oh. Junior, huh? He's a beast. Call the police. Yes, yes, How'd you get in, Junior? Junior? Shut up! <laughs> now, I've stood about enough of this. You people listen to me. My name is McMahon. I'm not engaged to this young lady or any young lady. I came here on business, and you mistook me for somebody else. Isn't he your fiancé? No. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, then that settles everything. It doesn't settle anything. I came here to talk business. Oh, you're the lawyer who wrote all those letters from New York. Well, at last we're getting somewhere. You remember, Papa, I gave them to you. Oh, yes, letters. Papa? Papa, have you been throwing your mail away again? Now, Papa, you promised not to do that anymore. I have so many things to think about. What, what did he concern? Remember, I told you all about it. Mr. Mc... Uh, Mc... Uh, Mc Morrow. Uh, Mc what's this here? It represents a kennel club. A hunt club in Westchester. Oh, yes. Well, anyway, they want to buy the farm Grandpa left us. Mm, well, I don't think we ought to do business with a man who goes around kicking children. Oh, well, Herbert, it's very simple. All we do is sign a paper, and Mr. Mc... Uh, what's this here gives us $100,000. No. $100,000? Each? Uh, no. Now, if, if you'll just let me explain the situation. The Westchester Hunt Club wishes to buy this tract of land to enlarge its premises, and is willing to pay $100,000, which you heirs will then divide. Now, inasmuch as your deceased grandfather, Mr. Herbert Tillamook Pemberton, died intestate... Mrs. Pemberton? Yes? Stop throwing eggs at the ice man. Oh, my goodness. Tell her to stop. Eggs at 45 cents a dozen. I told her and told her, but she won't stop. She's been drinking Mr. Herbert's sherry, and she says he reminds her of her second husband, and he beat her. Oh, Herbert beats the cook? Or does she mean the ice man? Oh, well, I guess we'll have to lock her in the mop closet again. Call Wilbur. Oh, excuse me, please. I have to see about the dinner. Dinner? Oh, I must dress. You'll excuse me, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Junior! Did you kick Junior hard? Oh, not hard at all. I'd scarcely call it a kick. Oh, that's too bad. I suppose you think we're all a little crazy. A little crazy? I wouldn't say that. Well, excitable, then. We're excitable. You see, Grandfather raised us all, and he believed that everyone should live absolutely without inhibitions. Just do anything you want, anytime you want. Yeah, it's great if you can get away with it, but I imagine the police might object occasionally. Oh, they do occasionally. Like the time Mama went waiting in the fountain at the plaza. But the judge only fined her $100, and I think that's very cheap for doing what you want to, don't you? If you have the 100 Oh, well, she lost her purse in the fountain, but she borrowed the money from the judge. Have you a comb? No. Well, you better get one because your hair's a little muscly and you look a little flustered. Well, I guess the excitement kind of got me. <clears throat> you know, if this wasn't my last chance, I'd run away from here and let somebody else do this job. Your last chance? Sure. If I don't put this deal through, there'll be one name less on the firm stationery. Oh, my goodness. We mustn't let that happen. That's terrible. Uh, have you a wife and some children to support? No. Oh, well, then it wouldn't be so bad. I know you've got a poor old mother. Well, I have... Now, I tell you what I'll do. I'll bring the whole family together after dinner and explain to them how serious the situation is. Then you can get their signatures and you won't lose your job and your poor old mother will be all right. But, uh, well, thanks very much. You're welcome. <laughs> nice of you to help me. Well, I suppose I'd better go to the hotel and change if I'm coming back for dinner. Yes. Is my cab still waiting? No, sir. I paid the men and sent him away. But my bag? In the green room. There's a misunderstanding. Will you get it for me, please? I'm sorry, sir. I can't lift it. My arm hurts where the cook kicked me when we locked her in the mop closet. Oh, please. Mr. Uh, McMorrow. McMorrow, we have plenty of room. Well, all right. Thanks very much. Uh, not at all. Oh, just a minute. Do you believe in Professor Jordan's theory? Professor Jordan? I've never heard of him. Well, you will. I... Something wrong, sir? What is that? Oh, that is one of Mr. Herbert's inspirations, sir. He calls it friendship. Friendship? Yes, sir. His theory in this particular painting is that knives, forks, and spoons are always together and help each other out. He said something about the sublimation of the inanimate. I didn't quite understand him. You don't say. Well, how'd he get up in the ceiling? He suspended himself upside down in the chandeliers. Oh, he said... Huh? Remarkable. He has another inspiration that he's painting on the floor of his bedroom. I'm sorry, I can't show you that, sir. Naturally, no one can step in there until it's completed. No one? Not even Mr. Herbert, sir. He's sleeping in the garage until it's finished.
I've started your bath running, sir. Well, thanks. I prefer a shower. I'm sorry, sir, but Master Junior has removed all the shower pipes to make piston rods for the caterpillar tractor he's building. You don't say. Will there be anything else, sir? No, thanks. I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, Wilbur. Could you enlighten me about this one? Mr. Herbert calls it the March of Time, sir. Uh-huh. May I ask you a question, sir? Certainly. Was it a very severe kick that you gave to Master Junior? Well, if he'd been a football, I'd have punted 50 yards. Please accept my congratulations. Pleasure. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> my, my, you're skinnier than the last man she was engaged to. <laughs> huh? I'll just read the terms of the document, and if you're all agreed, then each of you can sign a power of attorney, and I'll give you the check. <laughs> now, whereas the Westchester oh, Hunt... Oh, I am so sorry. Will you have some coffee? No, thanks. Uh. Now, whereas the Westchester Hunt Club, here and after known as the party of the first <laughs> part, is anxious, desirous, and willing to acquire, for the sum of $100,000, the plot of land known as the West 60, of the Northeast 180... I am confused. Oh, don't be stupid, Herbert. He means Grandpa's farm. Yes, you remember Grandpa Herbert. He had a bald head. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, now, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, I'll start right. again. Now, whereas the Westchester Hunt Club, here and after known as the party of the first part, <laughs> is anxious, desirous, willing to acquire for the sum of $100,000, no, the plot of land known as the West 60 of the Northeast 180, of the southwest section of the Chickawasha County. Oh, isn't that pretty, Chickawasa? Through the forest dark and gloomy came the voice of Chickawasa calling to his Kichikuma, calling, calling, calling. Of Chickawasha County, aforementioned property, being the... <laughs> aforementioned property being the property of the heirs of Herbert... T Tillamook Pemberton, being the property of the heirs of Tillamook Pemberton, deceased and heirs there and after known as the parties of the second part. <laughs> said heirs being the party of the second. Uh, yes. Can you let me have three bucks till payday? Yes, certainly. Take it out of my purse. Thanks. My bookmaker is hounding me. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Said heirs being the party of the second parts, I, I mean heir of the second deceased. I mean said heirs here and after being known as the parties of the second part. That's us. Yes. Isn't that nice? I mean, it's better than being third or fourth, don't you think? Oh, oh look, I, I, I've knitted myself into part of the scowl. Oh, oh, my gracious. Oh, don't, don't get excited. I'll help you. All you have to do is just take the needle out. There you are. Now you've ruined the whole thing. Oh, now, Uncle Alan. Oh, really? Well, I'm awfully so sorry. I know nothing about knitting. I just oh. wanted to do my bit. That's... Oh, as you were saying... Yes, do go on now. Mm. The heirs of Herbert Tillamook Pemberton, deceased and, uh, and heirs here and after being known as parties of the second part... Again! Oh. Again that brat's been smearing jam and shoe biting all over my masterpiece. I'll kill him. No, 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 no,
All right, all right. This time I won't get him. But next time... Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll send for a window washer at once, and then you can do it all over again. Oh, well, but we'll telephone again. for a window washer instantly. Yeah, instantly. now, everybody be quiet. Yeah. Sit down, and we'll hear some more about the farm. All right, Mr. McWhite, yeah. just proceed. Oh. Oh, he's gone. Oh, my goodness, that young man disappeared just like magic. You don't suppose he's a magician, do you? <laughs> he's probably crazy. <laughs> Said he was going to give us $100,000. <laughs> Mr. McWatsis? Uh, uh, Mr. McWatsis? What's the matter? Where are you going? Downtown to a hotel. But why? Because I'm a nervous man, Miss Pemberton. Look at my hand quiver. But the signature, you haven't got the signature. No, and if I keep talking to your family all in a bunch, I'll wind up in a zipper jacket. So I'll go down to the hotel and get a suite, then one by one I can lure them down there and work on them individually. Oh, but this way so easy. You just stay here. They all sign the papers, and then everybody's happy. No, Miss Pemberton. I'd like to, but... Hmm. Mm. Well... I've got to think of my digestion. Uh, but, uh, Mr. McWatsis, uh, please, don't spoil my good deed. Your good deed? Yes. You see, I said to myself, Tony, he's a hard-working young man with a poor old mother to support, and if you don't help him, he'll lose his job. That's what I said to myself. And how did you answer yourself? Well, I said, all right, Tony, you help him, and then that'll be your good deed. Uh, of course, there's another reason why I don't want you to go. And that is? The blue eyes and wavy brown hair. I, I mean, they go very well together. What are you talking about? Your hair and eyes. Well, uh, we, we better talk about something else. All right, then. What do we talk about? Well, I don't know. Uh, let's talk about your fiancé. Oh, him. He hasn't got blue eyes, but he's masterful. Masterful? Oh, yes, very. You know the Roger's secret of success? You see the ads everywhere. Be aggressive, grab the bull by the horns, opportunity knocks but once, grab it. All in six easy lessons for $50, you know. Yes, I've seen the ad. Oh, sure you have. Well, he's Rogers, Howard Rogers. Mm, he doesn't sound as if I'd be very fond of him. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't be. I'm not. Now, wait a minute. You say you're not fond of him, but you're engaged to him? How come? Oh, I couldn't help it. He's so masterful. Where do you meet him? Uh, I'm not going to meet him. I'm leaving. Oh, uh, no, no. Don't start that all over again. Now, please, I want you to stay. Where's the family? In the drawing room. I'll announce you. I'll announce myself. Hurry, hurry. Where have you been? It's been hours. What? Don't stand there talking and talking. Wash it. Wash what? Oh, you must excuse him. He gets so upset over his silly painting. Stay. I don't Thank understand. You. Oh, it's very simple. I just wash the painting off that window so Herbert can do it over again. The cook can't do it because she's locked in the mop closet. Didn't you bring a mop? A mop? The mop. window washes all this. You can't expect I have to never wash the painting. I have never wash the painting. I have never wash the painting. Quiet! Quiet. There's some misunderstanding here. Now, pay attention, everybody. I am Howard Rogers. You are evidently my fiancé's family. Oh, you're Tony's fiancé. I certainly am. <laughs> and where is Tony? Uh, Tony, oh, she's upstairs in Mr. McWatts's bedroom. Very well, tell her that I'm here. Mr. McWatts's mm. bedroom? What's she doing there? Who is Mr. McWatts's? We don't know him. You don't know him, and she's in his bedroom? Mm -hmm. Well, very careless of you, I must say. Who is the man? Oh, he's practically a stranger to us. You see, we thought he was you. What? Uh, that is, we thought that he was the fiancé, Tony's fiancé. <laughs> Naturally, we didn't think any harm. I'm going to find out all about this. <laughs> now, I don't know well, what I do. All right, you win. I'll have one more try at him. I promise I'll make them listen. I really want to help you. On account of your poor old mother, I mean. You know, I've always said to myself, Tony, if you could ever find anybody... Oh, my goodness. It's Howard. That's your life, it is. What are you doing upstairs with this man? He's a lawyer. Uh, you see, that makes everything all right. Not with me, it doesn't. How do I know he's a lawyer? I mean, what difference does it make if he is a lawyer? I demand an explanation. Uh, we thought, we thought that, uh, that you were he. Uh, uh, well, anyway, he promises $100,000. What for? For Grandpa's farm. Why do you want to buy Grandpa's farm? Uh, that concerns the Pemberton family and them alone, if you don't mind my saying so. Well, I certainly do mind your saying so. Very soon I'll be a member of the family. So supposing you explain this proposition to me. Well, there isn't much to explain. Their grandfather left them a farm and I'm making a very good offer for it. What do you want it for? I don't want it, personally. Oh, you don't want it, but you're willing to pay 100000 for it. More here than meets the eye. Now, listen carefully. I don't want it. I'm making this offer on behalf of my client. Who's your client? A sportsman's club. <laughs> Sounds very peculiar to me. How do we know that you represent this, uh, this club? I'm telling you so. Well, you could tell us anything. How do we know it's true? We don't even know who you are. I'm Henry McMorrow, associated with the New York law firm of Parsons, Hilton, Trent, and McMorrow. Empire State Building, 78th floor. You'll find the suite and telephone number in the directory. Don't try to becloud the issue with words. A real businessman wouldn't find it necessary. He would simply produce a card. <laughs> or maybe you've lost your card case. Of course I have a card. Oh. Well, uh, huh. uh, 
I guess when I changed my things, <laughs> you know how it is, I, I didn't change things for my other suit. <laughs> Where is your other suit? Why, I packed it. It's in my bag upstairs. All ready for a quick getaway, eh? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, this is just as plain as the nose on your face. This man is a malefactor. He's a confidence man. Bag all packed in near the door. No identification. Comes here with a long cock and bull story about an imaginary client. Oh, stop it, Howard. You can't insult a poor man like that. You're only guessing. Guessing nothing. It's a mighty good thing for you that I arrived here when I did. That's me, in the nick of time, Rogers. Even if I did have to wait four hours in the airport for your car. Four hours? Now, how can we must speak tonight about that? Uh... Oh. I'm sorry I dropped the bags, but I was, I, I was thinking about something else. Uh, Mike, Mr. Uh, man, uh, uh, this gentleman waited four hours for you. Well, when I got to the airport, he was gone, so I picked up his bags and brought them. Now, tell the truth, Mike, where have you been? Well, honest, Mrs. Pemberton, I didn't know that it was going to be a triple bill. A triple bill? This is ridiculous. There must be some sort of system installed around here. Mike, you simply must stop keeping people waiting while you go to picture shows. Well, sir, I didn't know that it was a triple bill with a short and with a newsreel. And after I paid my 30 cents, I, I didn't want to miss Mickey Mouse. I don't blame you. Was it Mickey Mouse in the Alps? Uh, no, Mickey Mouse and the Sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey was living in the house, yeah. see? And the Sheriff gave him a dispossessed notice. Mm -hmm. Now then, the Sheriff and Horace drive the horse and wagon up to the back door and start moving out the furniture. <laughs> so the piano didn't want to leave. <laughs> and every time they put the piano on the wagon, mm -hmm. the piano would wait until everybody was out of sight, yeah. then it would sneak back into the shop. Oh, Mr. McQuarrie! Yes, Mr. McQuarrie! Mr. McQuarrie! Come in here, you're making a spectacle of yourself. Oh, he's gone. So what? Come in here. Uh, Mr. McWatsis! Mr. McWatsis! Stop that! Besides, he said his name was Mac Morrow. Mac Morrow! That's it. What? Mac Morrow. <sighs> blue eyes and the wavy brown hair. He's in Central Park feeding the pigeons. Oh, isn't that sweet? Feeding the pigeons. But what's he doing sitting in the park? Is he fired? You won't give me any more information. Well, is that so? I'll find out for myself. Sniffy. Sniffy, did you hear that? He's sitting all alone in the park with nobody but pigeons. <gasps> Sniffy, we're going to find him right away. You come with me. Go for a walk in the park. But why? Because of your poor old mother. Why did you run away from us? Well, I had to. I was beginning to hear strange voices whispering in my ear. Whispering in your ear. Oh, you poor boy. You've lost your job and now you're broke. Are you on the bed line? Well, I oh, hardly I say. Oh, I think that's perfectly terrible. Does it make you nervous to stand in line? Well, uh, very. Oh, I know it's hard to get a job. My cousin Albert hasn't worked all his life. Here. Here, you must let me lend you some money. Oh, but I couldn't accept money from a woman. Now, don't have any foolish time. Take this. We've got to get you some lunch. All right. I know a swell place we can get a meal. Three courses for 25 cents and all the bread and butter you can eat for nothing. Oh, good. Do you come here often? Only when I can afford it. I'm going to help you get your job back. Do you suppose they'd hire you again if you got all of us to sign? Say, they might even do better than that. If I ever walked in with all the air signatures on a power of attorney, they might even go so far as to put a buzzer on my desk or let me eat in the executive lunchroom. I've got a surprise for you. Another? Oh, you like this one. Guess what? I give up. I brought the whole family with me to New York just to make it easier for you. You brought the whole family? How did you ever manage it? Um, you won't tell. I promise. I put quarantine signs in all the houses in the neighborhood. Scholar fever. No. Yeah. 
Well, remember, we've got to get all eight signatures. Seven wouldn't be any good. Oh, don't you worry. We'll get them. You meet me at the Warwick Towers for four o'clock tea. I'll be in front of the flower shop. But I can't go like this. I invited a man, not a suit of clothes. Sonny, you're wonderful. I think so, too. <laughs> Oh, here you are. Junior told me you had an appointment here with some other man. Go away, Howard. I'm waiting for a gentleman in distress. Now, go away. Are you aware that you have a date with me and my Uncle Crane of Crane Rogers Incorporated to visit Grant's tomb? We can't disappoint him. I'm sure Grant won't mind. You can't let me down like this. I won't permit it. You don't know your own mind. Come on. Now, Howard, don't be masterful. I can't go with you. <gasps> Come on. He's got wavy brown eyes and dreamy colored hair, and he's not masterful. He doesn't twist my arm. You are simply delirious. Come on. Let go of me, Howard. You are coming with me and none of your tricks. No! Let me go. Let me go. You stop it. I don't like scenes. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. Taxi? Uh, yes, sir. Not another penny, do you hear me? Not another penny, you drunkard. Why, Tony? For years you've been spending the money I give you on drink. What are you and talking? your little children what? without milk. Why, I never... Heaven will strike you down for this, Howard Rogers. Why, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The higher law than the laws of men. I have never... Poor little starving children. Wait a minute. Hungry kids, huh? You want me to smack him in the mud, lady? Uh, yes, thank you, if you don't mind. Why, sure. Oh, Hungry kids, huh? Oh, look here, my dear sir, don't you lose your temper. Oh, uh, calling the lady a liar, huh? Why, she's going to be my wife. Oh, she uh, is, huh? Yeah. Well, I'll run you out of town, you big stiff. Oh. 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 Oh, hello. Oh, it's you. Yes. Oh, that was fun. You want to go around again? No, no, some other time. What was the trouble out there? Oh, a terrible man. He spends all his money on drinks, and his children are hungry, too. Somebody ought to punch him in the nose. I think somebody did. Have you got the paper? <laughs> Have I? All right, I'll start you off with my signature. Got a fountain pen? Right here. Does it matter which one I sign? No, no, they're regular form. Power of attorney. Sign anyone. All right, turn around. Now, here's number one. Next on the list is Herbert. He's in the basement. Come on. Swell. Where's Herbert? What's this? Mr. Herbert is doing a marine painting, sir. He wants to capture the feeling of the thing, the spray in his face and so forth. Come on. Oh, hi, Herbert. Who lets all these people in when I'm working? I might as well set up me easel in Grand Central Station. Oh, it's my sister. Hello. Hello, Herbert. Do you sign this, will you? Thank you. All right. Start the storm again. Hello. Hello, Mama. Uh, you remember Henry, don't you? Oh, yes, we met you on the Normandy. You were with the Evanses. And when Togo fell overboard, you saved him. No, ma'am. Now, don't be modest. It was a very heroic thing to do. Won't you, uh, won't you come in? But, Mama, he didn't rescue Togo. I've never even met Togo. You haven't met Togo? I'll have him brought right in. He won a blue ribbon last year. I mean, I'm not the man who was on the Normandy. Oh, I'm sure it was the Normandy. Or was it the Queen Mary? Now, I've never been on either, and I don't know the Evanses. Oh. Uh, never mind, Mama. Just sign this. Oh, sign this, sign that. That's all I heard when I went to the bank yesterday. After all, I said you know who I am. Put your name on it, Mama. Yes. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure it wasn't the Evanses. Positive. Don't you remember? I visited you in Aiken several days ago. About the farm in Westchester. Oh. Yes. Yes, I remember you. <laughs> yeah. You were the young man who acted so peculiarly, the um, eccentric young man. Yeah. What? Oh, never mind. There's Papa. Come on. Tony, the junior won't let me have the Nobel Prize. I don't think that's fair to you, just because he's the youngest prodigy ever to enter Harvard. I'll oh, speak to him about it, Papa, dear. Come on over here. I want you to sign a paper. Junior's so unreasonable. Yes, so I've noticed. Have you? Uh, sign the paper, Papa. Lots of people have, but nobody ever seems to do anything about it. If he were mine, I'd do something. Would you, really? I did. So you did. Young man's a lunatic. That's funny, he thinks we're a little off, too. That's a sure sign. Mad people always think that. Do you think we ought to call for help? Oh, no, Mama dear. I don't need help to handle him. I'm getting along beautifully. With the crazy man. Oh, help! 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 You heard our police under the city, Roger! Yeah, we're only the Lord! And you must resort to fruit strength! And, uh, Junior, what will the hell? Help! Help! Oh, dear. 
dear. Oh, Michael, did you hurt yourself? Alice, I have been assaulted by a thug. By three thugs, I mean. Where's Tony? Uh, she's with that crazy fellow. Uh, you know, the one who was an and she's gone someplace with him. With a crazy man? Uh, yes, you know that crazy young lawyer who wants to buy Grandpa's farm? They were just here. He had to sign something. What was it? A paper. Oh, of course, of course. But what did it say? I didn't read it. I didn't have my glasses. Well, who is he? What's his name? His name? Now, let me see. Uh, the Evans introduced him. Oh, no, how silly of me. Uh, that was the man who rescued Togo. Oh, uh, Papa? You are setting Junior a very good example. This man's name, what's his name? I'm going to find out all about him and about his proposition. Uh, um, uh, let me see, now what is his? Oh, here's his card. <laughs> Maybe it's all that. That is barely mm. possible, isn't it? Yes. Henry McMorrow. Uh, of course. Oh, I remember. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> That's Junior. He's beating Papa. Oh, Papa's beating him. Uh, uh, let me see, which is it? Uh, I guess they're beating each other. I'm going to find out about this man and about his business. Oh. If Tony's going to be my wife, I've got to protect her. And you too. Me? Oh, absolutely. We're making progress. Who have we got so far? Well, there's Mama, Papa, Herbert, and Uncle Alan. That is Aunt Pity, Aunt Patty, and Uncle Goliath. We can get them tomorrow. They live near each other upstate. Oh, fine. We can use my car. Your car? Uh, well, uh, I've got a friend who sometimes lets me borrow his automobile. All right, I'll meet you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And we'll have breakfast at the plaza. The plaza? Henry, you mustn't be so improvident and squandering my ten dollars that way. You buy your own breakfast and meet me here. I'll be in front at nine. Nine on the dot. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, Tony. Bye. I shined her all up. Check the gas, oil, and tires. Say, this'll never do. What's wrong, sir? Have you got a car of your own? I mean, your own personally? Yes, sir. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll use your car today, and you use mine. Well, okay, but don't bang it up too much. I got three more payments. All right. <laughs> Me for being late. So you almost got me a ticket, but I'll forgive you. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yes, sir. Do me a favor. Why, well, certainly, officer. Do you mind if I blow your horn? Not at all. Mine does better than that. It's got seven notes. He goes. Seven? Yeah. Hey, the commissioner's got one with eight. It goes. <laughs> Come on, get to going, get to going. Don't be creating a congregation. Isn't it cute? It looks like a loudspeaker on wheels. The fellow who owns this crate has a knuckle who's in the automobile accessory business. He gives them horns and lights and things for Christmas. Where are we going? Sycamore. It's 160 miles. Hang on. <laughs> Where can I get a taxi? Oh, thank you. Taxi? <laughs> yeah. You know where the old Pemberton place is? The old Pemberton place? Sure. Out in the country road, quite a piece. How much to take me there? Two fifty. What? Two dollars and fifty cents? All right, then. Two dollars. I'll give you a dollar and a half. There she is, the old Pemberton farm. You want to drive in? I certainly do. I want to examine this place very carefully. There ain't much to examine but a piece of land with timber on it. We'll drive up a bit, Ford the Creek. Take a short cut. Very well. Do you know any other shortcuts? What are you going to do now? 
Well, I'll get back in the road and flag someone to pull us out. You'd better. I think I'll get out and look around. Well, what's the matter? I guess we're up against it. Why, what's happened? The engine's busted. We'll have to hoof it. The engine's busted? Why? Yes. Uh, oh, well, that's fine. Yes, let's hoof it. A good brisk walk will do us both good. Come, man, now. Come, come. Heads up. Shoulders back. Chest out. Be masterful. Be master of your destiny. Let her in. How do you do, Antoinette? Hello, Hello Antoinette. What's the idea? Oh, they're afraid of burglars. <laughs> and Titty. <laughs> and Patty. This is Mr. McMorrow. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you come in? Uh, Mr. McMorrow's a lawyer. A lawyer? Be seated, please. Thank you. He's a lawyer. What's the matter? Uh, Grandpa always said not to have anything to do with lawyers. Oh, well, this is different. Henry's an honest lawyer, aren't you, Henry? Very. He wants to buy the farm Grandpa left us. Now, all you have to do is sign some papers and you'll get a nice big check. What did you say his name is? Henry T. McMorrow. Uh, they say it's not auspicious to do business with you today. Huh? You know, numerology. Your name has the wrong count. It comes out odd, and they can't do business on Thursday with odd people. I know just how they feel. Well, what'll we do? Well, they're your relatives. Wait a minute, what's your middle name? Oh, no. No, I don't want to tell you that. Why? Oh, oh no. Oh, please, you know how much it means to us. Well, all right. Throckmorton. Throckmorton. There, you see, Annie is even. All right. <laughs> all right. There you are. Thank you. There you are. Thank you. Glad I've met you, Miss Pemberton. And you too, Miss Pemberton. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Aunt Pitty. Goodbye, Aunt Patty. Ready, Tony? Coming. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, what a shame. Now they'll have to load it all over again. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, we'll be at Uncle Goliath soon. If this boiler holds out. Henry, there's something I want to tell you. What? Well, there's something I want to tell you about Uncle Goliath. Yes? Uh, Uncle Goliath is a bit eccentric. No. Yes. Uh, the family has always been a little quiet about Uncle Goliath. Well, how does Uncle Goliath go about being eccentric? Well, he thinks civilization is a failure. You don't say. Yes, he thinks everyone ought to go back to nature. He even grows his own food, except when he shoots with a bow and an arrow. Yes.
Lovely place your uncle has here. Oh, it's empty. Uncle Goliath doesn't live here anymore since he decided he didn't like civilization. He lives out there. Uncle Goliath! Woo! Uncle Goliath! What's that? That's Uncle Goliath. Doesn't sound very friendly. Oh, come on. Welcome, Tony. Hello, Uncle Goliath. Just been tracking down some wild game. Fine hunting hereabouts for a man who goes to the kill with nature's weapons and his own bare hands. But to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Uh, this is Henry McMorrow. How, How do you do? do? How do you do? do? Follow me, please. This is a perfect example of the unnatural life you lead. Men weren't content to carve their records on stone. They have to invent an infernal machine loaded with ink. Uh, here you are. Thanks. And now, how about some dinner? Hmm? Oh, I don't think uh, we... Uh, thank you very much, Uncle Goliath. But I'm sorry, Uncle, but we've got to be back tonight. Oh, it's raining. Well, goodbye, Uncle Goliath. Goodbye. Mmm, that smells good. almost wish I could stay for dinner. What is it, rabbit? No, snails. Snail. Uh, goodbye, Uncle Goliath. Goodbye. 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 gadgets on this heck, and that group has to leave off a windshield wiper. Can you see anything? Fix, I give you the shirt off my back. What are you doing? Why, the general has kindly offered to lend us his case. Oh, isn't that sweet? So off with the old and on with the new. And I, in the very next stall, shall be doing the same. Ready to ride and spread the alarm through every middle sex, village, and farm. I like limericks much better. You do? Oh, sure. All right. There was a young lady named Tony who borrowed a coat from a pony. She said, sorry, old fellow. I have no umbrella. Came a snort from the pony, baloney. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, said Henry, I've got good news. I found two pair of shoes. Uh, uh, I'm stuck. But how was it? Oh, just so-so. How's this one? There was a young man named McMorrow. From a horse, a blanket did borrow. It shouldn't be strange that the horse had the mange, as McMorrow will learn to his sorrow. <laughs> you got me there, Tony. <laughs> For me. First prize. <laughs> oh, ho. Your feet are on the ground. You're thinking sanely. You go about your business happy and free. And then suddenly. Love 
at work Even though you can't detect it Listen when you least expect it It knocks you down Danger, love at work When you do things sort of stupid You can bet that Mr. Cupid arrived in time Oh, you're gonna go You don't know when or where Close your windows, lock your doors, you better, better be, be careful. Danger, love at work, it's that old familiar story, when you think that noise is glorious, there's the star. So don't you think that you're too smart for, you slip and fall and break your heart. You're gonna go, you don't know when or where, so close your windows, lock your doors. You better be careful, danger, love at work. It's that old familiar story, when you think that night is glorious, that's the star. So don't you think that you're too smart for, you slip and fall, and, and you're gonna, gonna break, break, boom, boom, your heart. Are you satisfied with your good deed? You got a poor but worthy young man his job back. Yes, I'm satisfied. Henry, Henry, how much does that job pay? Thirty bucks a week, why? And you support your poor old mother on that? Well, uh, why do you ask? Oh, I'm just curious. You know, I want to thank you for helping me out. And, uh, I'd like to apologize for any cracks I made about your family. They're all right. You're all right, too. Well, there's something else I want to want to say. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I want to thank you. Oh, and... Henry. Oh, Henry. Henry, I think it's wonderful for a young couple to start out poor and wind up being rich, don't you? Yeah, but uh, do you think it's safe marrying a poor man? Oh, I don't have it any other way. I want to fight shoulder to shoulder with you, even if my family has got a lot of money. And of course, you've seen me at my worst, so you really must love me. I do look awful, don't I? <laughs> I'll say. Oh, I do, do I? Well, I suppose a permanent wave is more important to you than a loving heart. Well, uh... And I suppose a Chanel gown is more important to you than a sincere soul. What are you talking about? Well, it wasn't very nice of you. Oh, you got me mixed up. What did I say that was wrong? Well, first you propose to me, and then you tell me I look awful. I did no such thing. You did, too. All right, then I apologize. All right, you'll forgive me. I do look terrible. <laughs> How you doing? You look wonderful. Oh, that's what I wanted to find out if you'd lie for me, and you did. Darling, I, I think you're a little nuts, but I love you. Oh. May I escort you to your room? Oh, thank you. If there's anything you want, just ring. Good night, madame. Henry. What? Nothing. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Throckmorton. That's done it. I go to my room. Good night. Darling. I've got the report. Go right in. The chemist is here. Well, Mr. Rogers, yes. I made the analysis. Yes, yes, yes. There's no doubt about it. It's an extremely high-grade oil. High-grade oil, eh? Yes, Mr. Rogers, and it's practically free from impurities, except for a slight chemical, which we are unable to identify at the moment. Well, what do you think this chemical is? Well, it's a positive. We don't know what it is. I know it may sound silly, but it greatly resembles ink. Ink? Ink. Oh. Oh. Uh, thank you, McElvain. Sorry to get you out of bed in the middle of the night like this. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Rogers. All hours, day and night, are the same to a man with aggressive ambition. Definitely, because, young man, uh, well, that's from my course. That's lesson number five. Yes, sir, I took your course, Mr. Rogers. Did you really? Look, wh why, you're an honor roll man. Give me the honor roll grip. I have never yet met an honor roll man who was a failure. I tell you, this man is a thief. 
How much did he give you for the property? A measly hundred thousand dollars. Why, that's buttons, that's peanuts. That property is worth four, five, six, ten times that amount. And I want you, each and every one of you, to remember that the moment I laid my eyes on him, I said, there is a man to watch. Then you think we should get more money? I'm going to insist that you do. Fine, then I can buy an inverted pizza. Now, Mr. Pemberton, you have got to get into action at once. We have got to have the entire family gathered here for a conference. Call them. But, but I, I don't you think go that... On, I, go on. I, I, well, uh, Here's the telephone. No. Uh, well, I, I really don't think that Be I... decisive, man. Be decisive. Uh, will you, please? I'll get the automobile. All right. They must have stayed in the barn all night. No one must know of this. In my day, girls were more careful of their reputations. But why do you suppose they stayed there? Pity. Please. The subject is closed. But I don't understand. Pity. Oh. So that's it. Want me to go along and tell the family with you? No, you go get your clothes pressed and a clean shirt and come back. I want you to look wonderful. Fine. And get a haircut. Oh, oh, and have them cut it a little higher on the back. Bye. Bye. No, it's not true. He's not a crook. Oh, Tony, you've practically called Mr. Rogers a liar. I mean, after all, he says this crazy young fellow is a crook, and you as much as say he's lying. Not as much as I do say he's lying. Henry's a nice young man trying to keep his job so he can support his poor old mother. Oh, yes? Supporting his poor old mother by cheating you out of your property. How do you mean, cheating us? I think $100,000 is a wonderful prize. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I do, do I? Especially since we really don't need it. Well, I'll pay $125,000 for the property. Now, do you still think $100,000 is such a wonderful price? But I don't understand what... Suppose I tell you this poor, struggling young man is really from a very wealthy family. I won't believe it. Supposing I tell you that this poor old mother, as you call her, is at the moment on a cruise in the Mediterranean with a maid, a companion, and two Pekingese dogs. I won't believe it. Supposing I tell you that this poor young man has a sailboat in which he won the last you to race. I won't believe it. <laughs> of course, poor young men always go in for yachts. Of course, poor young men always live in 14 room duplex apartments on Park Avenue, surrounded by a flock of servants. It's not true. I'll have him come over and twist your arm oh, the way you do mine. He won't come over here. He's got your property. That's all he wants from you. But go ahead. Call him up and get him over here. And we'll see who twists whose arm. If he comes over, maybe you can kick him for me. I will, with pleasure. I'll get him right away. Oh. I don't know his number. I don't even know where he lives. I do, the Park Lane Apartments. And I'll get him for you. Operator, operator, get me the Park Lane Apartments, would you please? That's right. And get me Mr. McMorrow's apartment. Of course, poor starving young men always live in the penthouse at the Park Lane. Mr. McMorrow's apartment? Just a moment. There you are. This is Tony Pemberton. I want Mr. McMorrow to come over and see me right away. Yes, please. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Who is this speaking? His valet, yes. A valet. Now, perhaps you'll believe me. He's got a valet. Oh, don't you see? He's just been lying to you all the time, trying to play on your sympathies, trying to get you to help him cheat your family. And he would have succeeded if it hadn't been for me. Oh. Uh, a young lady just telephoned you, sir. Uh, tell her I'm out. I didn't have a chance to tell her anything, sir. She did the telling. I'm out to her and to all the other young ladies, Edmund. I've met a girl, a wonderful girl. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. And remember, from now on, I talked to only one young lady, Miss Tony Pemberton. It was she who called, sir. Uh, what? Why didn't you say so? What does she say? What does she want? She seemed very upset, sir, and wants you to come over right away. Oh. oh just, just a moment, sir. Just a moment. You must have your coat, sir. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. Don't you want your briefcase, sir? Uh, no. Uh, yes. <coughs> I feel like a man in a straitjacket. No freedom! 
Ah, I'll be glad when this is over so I can go back to a decent way of living. Yeah. Now, there's something typical of this modern nonsense. <laughs> Will someone tell me what on earth these idiotic things were put there for? Buttons on a coat sleeves originated with Marquis d'Avacour in 1685, when he put large metal buttons on the sleeves of his guardsmen's uniforms to keep them from wiping their noses on them, of course. Junior, don't be indelicate. Tony, what's the matter? You've got a valet. Well, uh... I've, uh, well, uh, uh, I've, uh, don't stall. Don't, don't evade the issue. Speak up. Yes, speak up. Oh, Henry, there must be some mistake. Please tell me you haven't got a valet. Of course I've got a valet. Ah, you see? You see? I'll handle this. Let me tell you, you crook, we'll fight this to the Supreme Court. You'll fight what to the Supreme Court? But he... Quiet. Don't pretend innocence. You've robbed these people. What? Stolen their poor grandpa's farm for a miserable hundred thousand dollars. I didn't steal anything. A hundred thousand dollars is a good price. Yes, I... Quiet. Now you're going to tell us you didn't know there was oil on the property. Oil? Well, you don't know what you're talking about. There isn't oil within a thousand miles of Westchester. Is that so? I don't know what he's trying to get at, but I can assure you that $100,000 is a very fair figure for the property. Yes, sir. Quiet! Let me tell you, young man, that I stand ready to pay $125,000 for this property at this very moment. You will? Certainly. Oh, Henry, why did you do it? I thought we were going to be so happy. Now we can't be because I couldn't marry a crook. What would the neighbors think of policemen running in and out all the time? You think I'm a crook? Well, you've got a valet. Well, does that mean I'm a crook? No, but you lied to me. You told me you were a struggling young man with a poor old mother. And, and she's in the middle of the Mediterranean on a Pomeranian with two yachts. I mean, well, anyway, you lied to me. Okay, have it your way. But if he's willing to pay $125,000 for the property, I suggest that you sell it to him. Have him make out a check and I'll turn over my powers of attorney. Oh, I'm going to try the other tack now, are you? Yeah. It's no use, my boy. Your bluff is called. All right. <coughs> Goodbye. And I'm glad to have met you all. Are you sure it wasn't on the Normandy? <laughs> oh, it's going to be all right. Oh, I didn't Shh, Relax, relax, and there you are. Let's take you to the bank at once. Yes, it's the merchants. Why, don't you trust me? Yes, but an overly aggressive exterior such as yours sometimes conceals and compensates for an indecisive characteristic. You might change your mind and stop payment on the check. Oh, fiddlefish. <laughs> Papa wouldn't let me go to the bank. You look as if you needed about five grains of acid acetyl salicylic. What's that? Aspirin. I can't believe he'd do it. He didn't. He didn't. No. I don't like the chap to be perfectly honest about it, but I have to admit he's not a crook. How do you know? He's too dumb. Not the type. Now, you'll know it according to Lombroso's theory of criminal types. It's utterly impossible for Henry to be a criminal. He's the allocentric type which, while it is admittedly belligerent, the makeup is definitely without avarice and without much brain. Oh, Junior. Oh, Junior, you're a darling. Call Mr. Parsons and tell him I'm sending over my resignation by special messenger. Your resignation, sir? My resignation. I'm sorry, sir. And you better look for another position. Another position, sir? Haven't I been satisfactory? Sure, but I'm going away, out of the country on a long trip. Oh, then you'll surely need me, sir. When it comes to traveling, I'm indispensable. <laughs> no doubt. But now that I'm no longer with the firm of Parsons, Hilton, Trenton, McMorrow, my financial status will be quite a bit different than it has been in the past. I'm sorry, sir. Very sorry. I'll send the message at once. Mr. McMorrow's apartment. What name shall I say, Ms? What? But, see, young lady, sir. She seems somewhat incoherent. Mm. She says she knows that you're not a crook. Mm. But... What? She says even if you were a crook, she'd marry you anyway. I may say so, sir. She sounds loony. Mm, a masterpiece of understatement. Tell her I'm out to her. Mr. McMorrow says he's out to you, miss. Uh oh. Oh, he hates me. I know what I'll do. I'll enter a monastery. A misnomer. You mean a nunnery. <laughs> and so, my dear sir, where would I be today if I hadn't learned the secret of the mastery of men? Where? You take my last big deal that I have just terminated so successfully. Why, there's millions in it, absolute millions. The man who is aggressively ambitious. The man who has the feeling that success is... Sorry, you pardon me, won't you? Hello? Hello? Howard Rogers speaking, yes. Oh, yes, hello. Hello, you, uh, excuse me, won't you? Uh, were you up there? Yes, there's no oil on that property. I'm positive. 
Well, I'll tell you what happened. We found a rattletrap automobile wrecked upstream, and the oil came from its crankcase. Oh. 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 Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, Tony. Tony, do go in and see your Uncle Alan's new snake. Or, or is it a... No, no, it's a stamp. I don't want to see anything. I think I don't want to live. I'll call a hairdresser. What you need is a shampoo and a facial. You know, whenever I feel that way, I always have a shampoo and a facial. Mama, please go away. Tony, that's no way for a mother to talk to a daughter. I mean, for a daughter to talk to a mother. Well, you, you know what I mean. Oh, Tony, do go in. Pity and Patty are going to Europe on a vacation, and Herbert has bought three big easels and Papa a new spy glass. Mr. Pemberton! Mr. Pemberton! You've got to give me back my money. I've been cheated. There's no oil on that property. You've got to give me back my money. But we've spent it. I've just bought a new telescope with my share. Oh, but Mr. Pemberton, I'll be ruined. Uh, oh, 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 what's the matter? Alice, what? there's no oil on the property. There's no oil, but we don't care. You see, we don't own it anymore. Oh, Tony. Totally. No oil on the property? No oil on the property. Uh, Howard Rogers, you oh, lied to me. You told me there was oil on that Tony, property. Tony, it was all a mistake. Yes, yes a mistake. but Tony, Tony. $125,000. That is quite a lot of money, isn't it? Oh. Well, you can sell it back to Mr. McMaw for $100,000. That way, in simple mathematics, you only lose $25,000. Why, of course. You see, $125,000. You've got to give me my money back. Why should they? Remember? A pluribus unum. <laughs> you mean caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. Julia. I've told you not to correct Mama in front of strangers. Oh, oh what'll I do? What'll I do? Well, Howard, my advice is... Yes? Be successful. Grab the bull by the horns. Oh! Please tell him I'm a stop him. Tell him it's a matter of life and death. Well, please tell him there's no crooks in the yard. Howard made a mistake, and I don't care about his mother. I love him. Oh! He won't talk to me. I'll never see him again. It's your own fault, my dear. When girls are careless of their reputations, men always lose respect for them. What do you mean? It's the old story. A girl must guard her reputation. Now, I ain't never stayed in any bonds with any young men, and I never was jilted. You knew? Yes, we saw you. But don't worry. My lips are sealed. Blood is thicker than water. And to this family, what's one more skeleton in the closet? Please keep my secret. Me? Yes. Please don't tell anyone about my staying out all night with Henry. What? 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 Did I understand you to say that you stayed out all night with Henry? You heard me. Oh. Anyone to know? Well, this is a fine state of affairs, staying out all night with a man who doesn't know one stamp from another. This is terrible, Tony. You shouldn't do that. I mean, staying out all night. You know, we had four chauffeurs quit in a month because of our late hours. She didn't have the car. I did. In that case, I have no complaint. I don't see what's wrong either. I believe in the single standard. Uh, now, Herbert, this is no time to be discussing financial matters. Personally, I think Mr. Roosevelt was right about that, and about the Supreme Court, too. Papa, do something. She's your daughter. Say something to her. Well, what'll I say? He promised to marry me. Oh, the cad. I think it'd be nice to have a shotgun wedding. A very archaic custom, if I may say so. And we have no shotgun. <laughs> we could buy one. That's just exactly what we'll do. Come, Papa. Now, here, now, here is a very fine piece. Double barreled, barrels by Sheffield, the stock, pure Circassian walnut, checkered by Fogalio, engraved by Lever Cantful Cochran and McHune of Dublin. A marvelous gun for mallards. Or perhaps you wanted a gun for skis. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, but uh, what kind of guns have you got for weddings? Wonder who that is. Young man! Young man! Young man, you must marry my daughter! Huh? You must marry my daughter! Why? 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 That's right, why? Because you let me on with false promises of marriage. Put that gun down, I might go off. I don't think so, we didn't buy any shells. You'll do the right thing by my niece, you'll have me to answer to. Yeah, well, what'll you do about it? Well, there's always the court, you know. Supposing I don't want to marry your daughter. 
I don't blame you. Marriage is a biological trap designed so solely to... So that's where my Darwin book went. You stole it! Now, Junior, be quiet. This is no time for discussion of literature. Now, Henry, are you going to marry my daughter or not? I'd like to talk to your daughter alone. Will you go in the next room, please? Well, now, I don't... Please, I don't... 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 I